Today we tackle a Toyota Tundra, where the boys will install an aftermarket air breather, then go underneath to bolt in a cap back exhaust. Next we'll explain polishing hardware and expound on new alignment technology, next on Motorhead Garage. Another episode of Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, you can see what Sam and I are working on today. We got this 2013 Toyota Tundra here, 5.7 V8 in it. We're going to add a little bit more performance to this truck. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to install, first of all, a TRD air intake system on it. And it's pretty simple to do. This is something you can do right in your garage or in your yard. Bolts right in. You take off the old one put in a new one. I'll show you exactly what we're doing here. There you go, buddy. Okay, Sam's got this off now. We've got the air filter out of here. And they'll explain a little bit more about this. We've got Jamie Sunderland here from TRD. And Jamie, come on in and explain to us what you guys have done now to make this a lot more powerful. What we've got here is a, a larger intake system here. This, this bigger filter, as you can tell, is a whole lot bigger than that little one there that comes. No it's question lot, about it. A lot less restrictive. It also has an intake flow accelerator right here. And what that does right there is it really speeds up that airflow into the engine. So you're gonna get a cooler, dense air, which as you know, increases your horsepower. Yeah, it's like a Venturi effect. Exactly. Here, it? Just like yeah. your carburetor. Air going down, yep. speeds it right on through. But this is a real piece right here. You can see a big difference. Let me turn this around so folks can get an idea exactly how much larger this is. So you got more area there, you get more air in, more performance, right? right? exactly. And if it's like most of the things I've ever put on on a Toyota, it'll bolt right in. There's no fitting on these things. And it also has a little filter minder, so it'll fit in here. This will allow you to see how much dirt is accumulated in this filter. It right. gives you an idea when you need to clean it. So this is a pretty nice deal. This is what you'll find this in like in all the big heavy trucks too. Exactly. You? We got these here too. All this is made by you guys? Exactly. This is a red powder coated uh, air intake tube, but it really, if you can see the one that Sam took off the truck, it's uh, this is a lot less restrictive. So Again, everything is about efficiency and getting it into the engine as quickly as possible so that we make more power. Good deal. Well, let's go ahead and get these things on. We'll see what kind of power we can make out of this thing. All right, when you take out your lower part of your box, which we're gonna use over, it's held on by two screws, two six millimeter screws with 10 millimeter head, plugged in the fender. This is the stock unit that's on there. You pop that off. Now, in the kit from TRD, you're gonna get this unit. It's an air accelerator. It's gonna go right back on, it's keyed so you can't put it on wrong, clips in place. And what this is, this is Venturi design, so it's gonna accelerate the incoming air. Anytime you accelerate air, you drop the temperature, more dense, you have better cylinder filling. I can put this back on, bolt it in place, and we're ready for the air cleaner. All right, now one of the things you wanna do is, on the old filter, there's a gasket that goes around here. You wanna take that off and put that around the new filter like so, and then you're in business. Okay, Sam. Here it is. Drop this in here. There you go. Now I need the top. Now you're cooking with gas, buddy. Something else too in this uh, housing, you know, there's another filter in here. Just extra protection on this. Now before you put this on, right here you got a place, there's a boss here. That's for your little mass airflow sensor. That you gotta take off the original air box and put that on. You're gonna have wires and tubes that go up to here. But look in here at your throttle body, there's your throttle flap. This is a bi-directional DC motor. This is drive-by wire. Do not stick your finger down there and move your throttle flap. You break the motors and you're done. That's a very expensive unit. You have a temptation to push on it. Don't do that, you'll kill it. Hi, right, Davey, I need the mass airflow sensor out of another air box. Okay, let me take that off. What you wanna do is remove your sensor and transfer that over to your new housing, which I'm doing right here. All right, now, you get these two coupling hoses. They've got little bellows on them. Put that on your throttle body. Tighten your clamp. Make sure you get it nice and square. Then we have this nice intake tube that comes with TRD's kit. Now, you got a hose here. This comes off the regulator, plugs onto there. This one comes off the road draft or PZV system. That slides up on there, and it's got a little spring-loaded clamp. Just make sure you get your hoses on right. Now, you see this also, it has a steep angle, which means that your engine cover is going to hit, but we got spacers in the kit to raise this up a bit, so it's going to fit when we're all done. Now we're ready to put the top of the air box on. All right, bud, here you go. I'll slide this on. There we go. Yeah, there we got go. It it's on. Yeah, I'm okay, on. Okay, now let me go ahead and lock this down. I won't tighten this yet until you're all done. 
Make sure your clamps are good all the way around, nice and square, so they'll clamp the bellows tight. You don't want any intake leaks between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle plate, because anything that leaks in there will not be measured by the sensor. Where's our harness for our mass airflow sensor? There it is. Put that right in here. And the last thing to put on there is our filter monitor. Now this has just a little grommet that goes on there and slide that in. We got this nice intake, you're gonna get about eight horsepower, about seven and a half foot pounds of torque. Bolt on in no time, you can do it yourself. And there you go. All right, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we got a lot more coming, so stay with us. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. OPG, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Quadratech, the trusted source and guaranteed lowest prices. And by Apple Hill 4x4, the area's largest independently owned true one-stop shop. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, we're on the second step of increasing the performance and the power in a Toyota Tundra. What we have here is a stainless steel exhaust system from TRD. Jamie, tell me about this thing. What kind of power are we gaining? Well, we usually get about six horsepower and close to uh, 10 foot-pounds of torque with it. Wow, six horsepower, 10 foot-pounds of torque. Remember, torque's what shoves you down the road. We got eight horsepower and about seven and a half foot-pounds with the cold air intake. So we're getting close to 15 horsepower and 20 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. And this kit comes complete. Tell me about these mufflers. The muffler kit that's on the Tundra now is a really big, boxy muffler. This is a true dual exhaust. Mm -hmm. You got dual in, dual out, and that relieves a lot of that back pressure. It gets us that low-end torque that we're looking for. Great. So you get great sound with no droning. Beautiful polished stainless tips with rolled edges. Nice welding. You get a complete kit. Brackets, hangers, hardware. We even get an additional heat shield. It's a pretty nice kit. Let's see how Davey's making out. What we're doing is we're gonna drop the exhaust system. Now, we're changing this over. It's a cat-back system, so it makes it pretty easy, and especially when it's a brand new truck, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. Let me get this down. You know, if I'd put a little schmutz on that, it would've worked easier. <laughs> it sure would. All right, let's get rid of this. All right. Okay, that one comes out. New one goes in. All right, now that we got our dual mufflers on, the other thing we've had to do is we had to mount a separate bracket back here on the back for the uh, tailpipe. And we also replaced a heat shield that comes in the kit, goes right up here, put a new one of those on there. So now we're ready. So Sam, do you want to pass this back through? I've never seen an exhaust system like this thing. You put it in and it fits. Fits perfectly. But make sure you go over the brake hoses and then this will pop right on this additional hanger. This little hanger, by the way, notched on around the rivet on the cross member. Fits perfectly, yeah. All right, buddy, you want to give me a bolt, and I'll put this on to, just to hold it on and bring the other one in. I'm going to put them in for you, too, and turn them and tighten them up and all that good stuff. You know what? You are a sweetheart. By the way, we put buddy. brand new seals, gaskets. They're a round sealing ring on the flanges. These are all gas tight. Makes a nice job. Exactly, and this is what they look like right here. So be sure you put those on, don't overlook that. They come in the kit, gotta use them. Got it. All right, well, you got that, I'll bring the other one in. Okay, these are really nice flanges, three bolts. They bolt up well. Get all the hardware and seals in the kit. And again, all you wanna do is check your tailpipe clearance against the body, but it fits perfectly. Okay, here we go. Uh, you making a, a career out of that, pal? Absolutely. I've learned from the mash. Hold on to this. Let me get up under here. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. It's in the hanger. Push your in. Yep. That looks good. That's the hardware. Got the bolts here. Yep. All right. We put these in. Make sure your tips are lined up. This kit fits well. It looks good. And it's going to add the performance you need from TRD. There you see it. Here you have an actual true dual exhaust conversion. 
pretty nice, Sam. Absolutely. And these flanges don't rotate. They're welded on the pipe, so it positions the tailpipe tips perfectly with the exact same clearance on the body. Nice job. And a nice thing, bolts right up. Right. We're gonna take a short break. We got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage. Stick around. I'm here with Bill from Blast from the Past Street Rods. And Blast from the Past is exactly how you explain this car. This is actually a recreation of a late 60s show car built by the Alexander Brothers. Now, where do you start with something like this? By contacting Mike Alexander and saying, Mike, you know, uh, would you be uh, offended if we recreated your car? And Mike says, no, in fact, I know where the original car is. There wasn't enough left of the original car to really restore that one, but we did use the original grill shell, and the rest of the car we re recreated using a uh, American Speed 33 speed body. Give the secret away. Tell everybody what that grill is made of. Oh, your old cabinet knobs from back in the day, and that's what we used again recreating it because we wanted it to be as close to the original as possible. The other thing that stands out on this car is the engine. Well, again, that's exactly like the original one was. It was uh, based on a 56 Oldsmobile 324 cubic inch motor, bored to 345 cubic inches with the 471 GMC supercharger and the four Stromberg carburetors on it. The original blowers used a three belt Krager blower drive, and that's what we had recreated for this, too. Take a long, hard look at this car, because about the only way you could have ever seen this car before is if you jumped in a time machine. Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, if you've got a car that you're wanting to detail out to sell or just to make it look good for yourself, you know, that can be a lot of work. Well, we've got Cody Sutherland here from Cyclo Toolmaker, who's got a unique tool that's going to make detailing this car a heck of a lot easier. Now, Cody, tell me about your polisher. You bet, Dave. We've been making this tool in the States since 1952. For over 60 years, we've been building this for detailing the exterior and the interior of all your vehicles, cars, boats, airplanes, what have you. So a guy who has this can't make a mistake with it, right? You can't make a mistake. You can't burn, paint, mar, or leave swirl marks. Now, using this, what's some of the common mistakes guys make? Well, there's a few mistakes. One is you can use too much polish. We recommend about a dime's worth on each pad, no more than that. The guys will maybe move the machine too fast. So with these pads normally moving 100 inches a second, there's no reason to add additional motion to that. Okay, so you're just letting the machine do the work then, right? I am. There's no need to, to bear down. There's no need to do this. Just let the machine do the work, and that's all it takes. Okay, now, with this surface, it's pretty weathered. How did you recommend to bring this right back up? Well, with this surface or any other, we'd start off with the least aggressive means that'll get the job done. Mm -hmm. So I've started off by using our one pass. It's a, a light polish and sealant right. all in one. If that doesn't quite do the job, and I don't expect it will, then I'd step it up a notch. I'd use something like our polish and swirl remover. If that does the job, fine. Those are the two steps we'll use on the whole car. Okay. If that doesn't work, you even go to more aggressive. You bet. We've got more aggressive after that. So I guess the key is, is you keep going until you get it so you like it, and once you get it at that point, then you go back the other way with the finer polishes until you get it. Real exactly. Nice, right? That's right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll continue on this one. In the meantime, I know Sam has got a project over here. Take a look at what he's doing. All right. Now, one of the great things you can do with the Cyclo is interior. And what I got is a set of mats here out of this Cadillac, and we vacuumed them. They got these nice brushes. They make all different types of brushes, four different stiffnesses. This is their standard carpet brush. Put it on here, and just start blowing like this. It'll pull the nap up and clean them real good. What do you think? Well, Sam, it looks good. Why don't you speed it up a little bit? Okay. And it's doing a nice job. And, you know, you can't hurt the paint. It won't hurt your hands. Believe me, I wouldn't do that if that was gonna hurt. Can you do this a little bit up and down? Pull the nap up. When that dries, the carpet's gonna be like new. And of course, you can do the softer brushes, 
Like this is the softest you make, is that right? This is uh, this is the gray ultra soft brush. It's for leather upholstery, headliners, even fine orientals. That's We developed it for a guy that does orientals for a living. This is a little softer brush than the white one that's on there for finer things. And then uh, this is a really stiff one. Pickup truck bed liners is a great use for this. The black or the white are great for cleaning non-skid surfaces on boats. And again, this piece of equipment, I've used these before. It's been around a long time. These are originally designed to polish aluminum on aircraft. So you can use them for your bright trim. But a couple of things I like is they've got these uh, nano skin pads. And what you do with this is, you know, before you wax a car, the best thing, you've all done these clay bars, does a great job, but that's a lot of work manually. If you drop a clay bar, you're throwing it away. You're throwing it away, that $30 yeah. bar is in the trash. That's right, because it's picked up all the grit. If you happen to set this down or drop it, you can wash it, reuse it. All of this stuff is reusable. You got bonnets that'll go over here for terry cloth and microfiber, all that kind of stuff. So it's a great way to go. Handy to use, easy to use, and it's not gonna hurt anything. Thanks for coming by today, buddy. Thank you, We Sam. appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this carpet, because this guy's real fussy. I wanna make sure his stuff is real clean. We're gonna take a quick break. We got a lot more coming here at Motorhead Garage. Don't go away. Hey, on this week's industry update, we're featuring a real problem solver for you. It's called Lug Ripper. And you know, if you have a problem where you have a lug nut that you can't get off a wheel, it's either stripped, it's galled on there, you know what you're gonna do. Sometimes you end up cutting the wheel. Yeah, and that's a bad deal. Well, here we can save you. Here's what it is. Comes a little package like this. What it is is a collar with a guide. What you do is you take and you'll slide this right over your lug nut like so. Clamp down your collar, and it's got a vertical slot on there. You want to make sure that's on the top, because what you're going to do is pour some water down there to keep this brooch cool. And you get a brooch like this, goes into your air drill like so. And then all you do is put a little bit of oil right in here, start in here slowly, and you gradually go ahead and just drill that thing out. And as you're drilling it out, you'll feed water down this vertical slot, help cool the tool, and it just cuts it right through, it guides it. Before you know it, you got the lug nut off. If you got two or three of them are galled or stripped on there, when you get the wheel off, you haven't damaged the wheel, replace your stud and nuts as you need them. And they got additional guides to different sizes for different lug nuts. So yep. if you want to save yourself, this is the way to go. You want more information about it, all you have to do is go to their website, Lug Ripper. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by Ansira. When it comes to your next Jeep, car, truck, or SUV, think Ansira. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. Rigid Industries, your one-stop shop for all your off-road LED lighting. Rugged Ridge, we make Jeeps rock. And by b w Trailer Hitch, American-made towing products. Hi, baby. Let's put these on. All right. Now, these go on pretty easy here. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, what we're doing here, in no time, we're doing a quick alignment check. And alignment is really critical. All we do is clip these things on. No centering, no nothing, it's just bang, that's it. Yeah, it makes it real easy. And you know, guys, these newer cars, especially with the different size wheels on there, the low profile tires, handling and ride quality are critical. And especially if the alignment is off, you're gonna suffer from that and it's gonna wear those tires out a lot faster and they get expensive. Oh yeah, like on this high performance Cadillac here, they got uh, run flat tires. That's a real problem if you wear out there 500 bucks a piece. We've clipped our four targets on, we got a wheel chalk in the back for safety. Push the car forward 18 inches, thereabouts, that's good. I'll chalk this wheel. Okay. Chalk that wheel. Now, one step, got a little infrared scanner. Go in here and scan the VIN code. That's all there is to it. This thing is all done. What we have done is we have checked this alignment on here. And what we're doing is we're checking it against the specs for this car. That's why Sam checked the VIN code on that thing. This way you can find out real quick whether your car is in alignment or not. And if it's not, then you know what you have to do. That's right. And over here helping us, we got Jeff Peel. He's the training manager for Hunter Alignment. Jeff, what's the name of this machine? This would be our Hawkeye Elite Quick Check machine. Okay. Now I was able to watch the screen and of course, it's reset itself already for the next car. 
We never had to push a button for print, and we have our printout right here. Nice, quick, in less, less than a minute, you've got a printout that's gonna indicate basically if you just have a problem or not. Yep, so again, you don't have to have your skilled alignment technician doing this. Exactly. So in a service drive, you could have a service rider or an assistant drive the car in, clip the four targets on it, roll it forward 18 inches, scan it, and the print comes out. Here we're out of spec on camber on the right front wheel, toe on the rear wheels, everything else is good. You can present this to a customer and either sell them alignment or tell them his alignment's in great shape and it's a free service. Or absolutely. Absolutely. Offering it as a free service to your customers is very valuable. It's gonna help you keep your existing customers. It's gonna help you build new clientele for your dealership or your shop. Great, and you've got a Hunter Elite Series aligner or whatever back there, you got three or four alignment guys. It helps to keep them busy. And again, it's a great service to the customer because like a tire's like this, 500 bucks a piece, you've given them peace of mind that you're checking it right there in the service drive. Exactly. So what do you think? Well, I think it's pretty neat, and I think something else, too, is this great, is a great opportunity, then, for it to explain to a customer what toe-in, toe-out is, camber-in, camber-out, you know? Right, and of course, right at the bottom, it says, we recommend comprehensive alignment check, excessive camber, tells you what a customer should know about, shoulder wear and poor handling, excessive toe causes scuffing shoulder wear, and poor fuel economy, all of the reasons why somebody would want to get their car aligned to save their tires and handle well. Right. One of the things our customers always ask for are ways to help them explain to the customer what needs to be done. And that's one of the things that we've done here with our uh, printouts. And, and it's so automated. Four target, push it forward, scan it, and it prints it out automatically, resets for the next car. So you can do a volume of these cars. Absolutely. Typically, every car that came into the shop, you'd go ahead and run it across the machine. At under a minute to do, takes no time at all. That's and great. You, and you know, this can eliminate a question, too, because you pull your car in, you get it checked, if you've got a problem, this can tell you whether you have it in alignment or there's something else. Of course, with something else, you may have tire balance problem, may have tire problems themselves. Yeah, right. So this is a good tool to use. But this is awesome. Everybody should have one of these in their service drive, huh? Exactly. All right. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you for bringing this by. I mean, this is a fantastic machine, and everybody ought to take advantage of that when they get a chance. Thanks again for stopping by. We've run out of time, folks. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage. So long. So let's um, tell this guy, hey, mind if you pick a pothole? I don't think that is. <laughs> he's got a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is he's got some caster and he's got the camber and it's showing the tire leaning out and the red and the green. You know, That's just great. He thinks he's running at Bristol.